Here he comes. <laughs> Did you see a pig anywhere? Oh, do you? Oh, I uh, don't you are the pig. You wouldn't be saying that if you were. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the pigs before they get us. <laughs> hey, I just watched Dave. I just watched Dave Letterman. You know, because this show is live, and so is Dave. So I just watched Dave. <laughs> He's got a sore throat. He was talking like this. It was great. I used my voice used to go like that when I was like becoming a man. You know, you're like 13, 14, and you, you start when you're a guy, you start going like that. And at the same time, you suddenly find women attractive. And you go, huh? I heard, right, recently, that when a man walks into a room and... Wo uh, <laughs> when a man walks into a room... What did I say? I, when a man walks into a woman? Whew, that was a bit of a Freudian penis. Oh, damn. When I, sorry. I, uh, anyway, when a man walks into a, a room... If there's a woman in the room, heterosexual woman, I presume, uh, uh, the, the, the instinct of that woman is to look at his area. His area, his field of operations, as it were. And I'm like, really? Is that true? You're doing it right now, aren't you? Well, I broke the camera. We'll be back in a minute. as if your applause were in some way genuine. I hate this guy. I came here to see The Price is Right. I know. Drew Carey's really made it his own. He has. Who's your favorite comedian? Carrot Top. It's a great day for America, everybody. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ooh, wait, hey, let me pretend I'm doing stuff. <laughs> Ooh, I got a booger there. Hang on. All right, there you go. Don't you ooh me, I'm European. That's how we do it. Hey, happy birthday, Bernie Madoff. <laughs> it's Bernie Madoff's birthday. Of course, he can't watch the show because he's in jail. <laughs> Actually, you can watch this show in jail, can't you? Anyway, happy birthday, Bernie. What do you get, the guy who stole everything? <laughs> you know, a Radio Shack employee was arrested for punching a customer in the face today. <laughs> well, it makes sense, since their new motto is Radio Shack. You've got questions, we're going to punch you in the face. <laughs> Customers in the face. Uh, I'm interested in this new DVD. Boom! <laughs> Mind your own business, you bastard. <laughs> All right, I'll go to Best Buy then. <laughs> hey, oh, uh, congratulations to uh, our president, President Obama. Today is his hundredth day in office. Uh, yes, well done. <laughs> now, 
The President, President Obama did not throw himself a party. He held a press conference earlier tonight. I watched it because this show is, of course, live. I watched the press conference. <laughs> Shut up! I watched it. It was great. I really liked it, actually, when he said that sometimes stuff was like other stuff. That was a, that was a good point. And then when he mentioned how things, you know, would improve, but it would take time, I think, yes, you know, he's got a point there. I, I didn't expect him to say that. Um, and he's got a lovely smile. All the TV networks carried the Obama press conference, except Fox, <laughs> who are apparently in a huff. They skipped the press conference to show an episode of a show called Lie to Me. Ooh, your subtlety amazes me. The next thing you know, Fox won't be covering the swine flu so they can show when animals attack. Does that make sense? I don't get it. Look, I get it. I get it. Look. Fox, Fox doesn't like President Obama. That's fine. They're entitled to their opinion. It's all right. It's, it's America. Good. Fine. But why not cover the press conference if you don't like the president? Because that's when the president might get tripped up. Obama might get tripped up by reporters asking him tough questions like, is the dog house trained yet? <laughs> <laughs> is Joe Biden house trained yet? <laughs> I think we should uh, examine the... Uh, examine? Yeah, let's examine the first hundred... <laughs> let's examine the first hundred days of the Obama presidency. He, he got the pirates. Good. Tick. <laughs> got the dog. Good. Tick. <laughs> Jury still out on the smaller stuff like, um, the economy. <laughs> getting the economy fixed is a lot tougher than getting your dog fixed, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not for the dog. <laughs> Rook, I really think we should just concentrate on the economy. <laughs> you can get to me any old time. Concentrate on the economy. <laughs> That's right. Oh, Rook, there's a pirate behind you, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I do give uh, Obama some credit, though. He's done some stuff no one expected. Yesterday, he got Arlen Specter to become a Democrat, which is very impressive. <laughs> do we have a picture of uh, Senator Arlen Specter? There he is. I... <laughs> That's not him. That's Phil Specter, of course. Arlen Specter's brother. <laughs> I think Phil Specter may have actually inspired Arlen Specter, because Arlen Specter could say to himself, I could still switch parties be a senator, I could switch parties and still not be the craziest guy named Spectre. <laughs> if Obama can turn Ireland Spectre, I wonder what he will do next. Could he turn Rush Limbaugh into a Democrat? Could, could he turn Ann Coulter into a woman? <laughs> oh, oh, stop. Come on now. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't always agree with Anne, but she, she is, she's lovely. She's a lovely woman. Do we, do we have a picture of Anne Coulter? There she is. I... <laughs> the Ireland uh, Spectre switching sides thing is a very big deal. So the last great leader to, to switch teams like this was Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> <laughs> She became a lesbocrat. <laughs> They're my favourite acrats of all. <laughs> but th this spectre move, right, this gives the Democrats 59 seats. Just one more vote and they'll be filibuster proof. And that one vote is Al Franken. <laughs> <laughs> what the f We can't afford pixelation anymore. I have to censor myself. <laughs> Al Frankton? I said Frankton, didn't I? Al Frankton. <laughs> no, Al Frankton. You've got to understand how strange this is. If 25 years ago someone to would to say to you, the balance of power in the United States Senate will all pivot on Al Franken. <laughs> they, you, they'd say you were crazy. Then you, you'd go back to listening to a flock of seagulls on your walkman. <laughs> you'd be like, this bad 
Martin will be around forever. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so Al Inspector, you know, Al Inspector says that he didn't want to leave the Republican Party, but the party left him. Yeah. <laughs> but I know, I know what he means a little bit. I kind of miss the old school Republicans. You know, the kind of Bob Hope Republicans. I liked them. You know, the kind whose only religion was golf. <laughs> they liked drinking whiskey and they would build factories everywhere and they'd tell off-colour jokes. What happened to those guys? They, they, those guys were great. You need, the GOP needs to bring these guys back or else you, all you're going to have left is the guys who go Wah! Wah! Where's my Oxycontin? <laughs> we have to take a break. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. the big show. I, I'd like to make an announcement tonight. I am switching sides from CBS. I am going to NBC. <laughs> I would never do that. Except for money. No, it's a family here. We're a family. We, I would never, I would never leave the mighty CBS corporation uh, for a financial offer better by some other corporation. Or would I? Oh, I would. <laughs> I wouldn't. Do we have time for email? Yes, we do! Oh. <laughs> well, we can't afford pixelation or email jingles anymore. Um, this is from Steve in uh, Mechanicsburg in PA. <laughs> Mechanicsburg? Where else is it going to be? Uh, Dear Craig, says Steve, I was watching live with Regis and Kelly this morning. Regis was pronouncing your name in a funny way and complaining that you and Johnny Mac were talking about him last night. You know, I saw that. I always watch Regis in the morning. He is as a god to me, Regis. <laughs> and I was watching, I was watching this morning, because jo John McEnroe was on the show last night. Very, uh, we were talking about Regis and how much we admired him. And how much we admired Regis. I, I admire, I think he's terrific. And then I see Regis on the show this morning complaining that we were not saying enough nice things about him. And I'm thinking, Regis, you bastard, you're dead to me. <laughs> and I'll tell you, we were saying how much we liked him and Regis is like, oh, they don't like me very much. Oh, really? <laughs> and you know what else he was doing which made me very cross indeed? He was going, and you know, Craig Ferguson. He was saying my name like that. Craig Ferguson. He always does that when he's like, he used to go, Craig Ferguson. I'm like, Regis, knock it off. Here's my, this is my new rule. If he keeps saying my name like Craig Ferguson, I'm going to say his name like this. Regis Ferguson. <laughs> Puffy and puffy sometimes. <laughs> we just feel me. You heard me, Regis. Who, of course, I still love immensely. <laughs> Don't you dare laugh at that. Regis is as a god to me. I do. I think Regis. I, there's, a, there's no one else can do what he does. He's terrific, and he sits next to Kelly all day, and she she can be a right chatterbox. That girl. <laughs> I wish someone would sit next to me when I'm talking to the camera. I get so lonely. <laughs> Don't you owe me, you patronising bastards. <laughs> All right, this is from Keisha in Poughkeepsie in New York. Keisha says, Dear Craig, is it okay for guys to wear makeup because my boyfriend recently started wearing heavy eyeliner? <laughs> Perfectly all right, as long as he's in a heavy metal band or some such. If he's a delivery man, though, I'm afraid he's gay. <laughs> And his package may be for someone else. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, come on. <laughs> um, this is from Austin in Manhattan in Kansas. Ah, you thought I was, but it wasn't. It was the one in Kansas. Austin says, Dear Craig, 
How is it that your show is live, but you always have highlights that air on Dave's show? If your show is live, then the highlights should not have happened yet. <laughs> Whether that Manhattan is in New York or in Kansas, it certainly contains the same amount of wise asses. <laughs> Um, this is from uh, Joseph in Littleton, Colorado. Um, Craig, I know that rattlesnake, cu that, that rattlesnake cup is starting to get on your nerves. No, I like it. So I've sent my address so you can send it to me. <laughs> All right, then I'll send it to you. Wait a minute. You just wanted the cup, didn't you? I think it was from Australia. Uh, <laughs> don't. Um, <laughs> nah, there's nothing here for you. <laughs> but I'm warning you, Regis, last time, you say, Greg Ferguson! Again, and it's gonna be, Regis <laughs> We'll be right back, everybody. I feel this audience is toying with me. <laughs> toying with me like I'm just a plaything. I'm a plaything to their weird sexual fantasies. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, <laughs> hey, have you been watching The Celebrity Apprentice? Oh, oh, man, man. They have all sorts of crazy on that show. It's fantastic. I've got, I, I never thought I was a fan of Trump, and not until now I've not, but when I watch that show, I, you gotta give it, that is a great show. The only thing I, I wish is, I wish they had bigger stars, like big giant movie stars. I wonder what that would be like. Hello. I'm Donald Trump. <laughs> Welcome back to Celebrity Apprentice. So we're down to firing one of you two. Sean Connery. Or Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay, you bozos, tell me what your charities are. <clears throat> well, my charity finds housing for wayward prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and all the proceeds go to building an extension in my bedroom. You see, right there, you know, I told you what my charity was and gave you a wee bit of coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about you, muscles? Yeah, well, well, the money that I will raise goes to one of the most poorest, desperate, and neediest places in the earth, California. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, hey, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Hey, hey, oh, all right. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, laugh it up, yeah, laugh yeah, it up. Yeah. Listen. All right, all right. All right. You listen, you two humps are in here because you're the worst on your teams. I gave you a task and you failed miserably. Well, listen, it's not my fault, you know, it's the other celebrities on the team. I mean, I kept tripping over that stupid Tom Cruise, right? <laughs> I could not see him, he's so tiny. Yes, he's very small. He's, exactly. he's very tiny. He's like that. Yeah. Yeah. There he goes. Yeah. Right. Okay. I get, I get, yeah. I get, yeah. I get, yeah. I get what tiny is. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, then, and you know, I, I'm not the worst on my team. Those three ladies on my team were impossible. Just impossible to work with. What? Your team didn't have any ladies. <laughs> wait, wait, those were the Jonas Brothers. Oh, oh my God. I think I may have committed a felony. <laughs> all right, all right, enough, you boobs. Now listen, you were supposed to make money running a lemonade stand. Sean, this is your lemonade, but you didn't sell any. Well, what I, happened? I, I, you know, I was going fine, but I ran out of lemons. You know, so I improvised. It tastes great. It's oh. actually very nice. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is good. What did you use? I used my pee-pee. <laughs> Oh, it burns.
guns. All right, hit calm guns. down. Oh, wait, wait. That's... <coughs> you know, it's not that bad. All right. It's Easy. pretty good. Hey, it's not bad. Now, listen. listen. My shelf. You yeah. know, All right, Kudos. hold on. Focus up, you <laughs> bozos. Okay, right. yeah. Now, Arnold, your lemonade was amazing, but you only made one glass. Yeah. What happened? Well, let me tell you, I started to squeeze the lemons, mm -hmm. and then I totally got the urge to squeeze the boobies, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then to squeeze the buttocks and more of the boobies and the buttocks. Let me tell you, it was the best day of my life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I gotta be honest, I, I don't know who to fire here. At least I don't have a stupid accent that no one can understand. What? Oh, oh. Oh. All right, all right, stop oh. it, stop oh. it. Oh. 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 Uh, hey, now, yeah, you're both being ridiculous. Yeah, and you are totally ridiculous with that stupid animal on your head. <laughs> what are you I talking about? Hey, 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 hold on, hold on. Hey, Come on now. What are hey, you, what are you hey, riding the bike? Yeah, Calm down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, hold on. I'll hey, have you humps know that this is my real hair. Yeah, it's not your real hair. It looks like a muskrat. Come what? on, here, muskrat. Oh, no, don't do that. Hey, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know what? Uh, you know what? Look at you, you should talk. I'll, I'll get you for that. Oh my god. Yeah. You guys wow. think you're so funny? You think yeah. you're funny? Yeah. Well, I'll have you hops know that my hair has got a lot of friends. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they're hungry too. Go get them, boys! <laughs> It's getting hot in here. I feel like busting loose. <laughs> My first guest tonight is an Oscar-nominated actor and director. He's in a new film series, Wallander, which premieres May the 10th on the great PBS network. Take a look at this. Please welcome the wonder that is Kenneth Branagh, everybody. Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Mr. B. How are you? I'm very well. Very it's well. Very, very nice welcome. This they're a very, very, very nice very audience. Lively crowd here. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank well, you. Appreciate really, it. they are very nice, and I think many of them, not all of them, but many of them are sexually attractive. <laughs> I think I'm getting a sense. I'm getting a real sense. Is it the pheromones that are coming across? It's, the, it may well be, or it uh, may be the swine flu. You don't I, know. It could be that. It could be that. Very, Does that have a sexual element? In my house, it does. Oh, yes. Does it? Okay. Yeah. Just I don't know what it is, but I'll but try. But it's working for you. Okay. It, why not? Yeah, it... um, I I am very excited by the Wallander. I've seen it over in Britain. Oh, have you really? Yes, okay. I saw it back over there because you're Swedish in that, aren't you? I am Swedish, but yeah, speaking, I could tell by the glasses English, in the, the glasses, clip. Yes, slightly <laughs> Swedish glasses. And I was typing Swedish. Did you notice that? I did not. Ah, no, I'm multi typey lingual. Do you so. speak? Do you speak um, Swede, Swedish? I, yeah, Swedish. Yeah. Okay, so I can speak a little bit of Swedish. Oh, uh, very good. A tiny bit. But I'm not, sorry, I can't understand you, uh, Kenneth. It's... Well, I have acquired the language over many years. Oh yeah, no, it's so. This is remarkable. I'm sorry, we can. Uh, Subtitle this later yeah, on. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> that's fantastic. Did you did you make it in Sweden? We shot it in Sweden in a town called Ustad in Skåne, oh, in right. southern Sweden, which is a beautiful part of the I've world. I've been there. Have you? I haven't been to. <laughs> but yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I be, I've been to <laughs> Stockholm. Yeah. And now what did now what did you make of the? Uh, I, I liked I liked the Sweden. Yeah. And do you what do you what do you think of the Swedes? Did it, there's anything because our our series has this I think quite sort of unusual atmosphere for in Skåne it's a very big landscape and there's time to think and it's the, like the Midwest really. Yes, bit. it yeah, is yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. There's this. What? But it is. It, it is. Really, honestly, it is. No, it's, it's like a bit like the weird. Dakotas or something. Isn't yeah. It? And they talk a little bit like that in the Dakotas exactly. too. Exactly. You know? You've seen how many westerns where you've heard people go, "Hello, how are you?" Well, um, <laughs> well, actually, not many. Westerns. Not many westerns. Yeah, not many Fair. Uh, Swedish westerns, though. Oh yeah, um, they must be good. Western Sweden, yeah. where men are. Yeah. Are. Well, there were spaghetti westerns, definitely spaghetti, spaghetti westerns, westerns. Are, and there are smorgasbord westerns. Oh. Um, and this is one herring of herring westerns. Herring. Perhaps. Now, do you eat herring? 
Only when I'm in Sweden. Do you? No, I've eaten heron. But I, uh, no, heron. heron. Yes, you've I've eaten, eaten heron. heron. Yeah. Right, that would make you. Then, then you've got the American Humane League. I need to talk yeah, to yeah, the no, RSPCA. Yeah, yeah, It's too late. It's my secret's out. I eat heron <laughs> and swan. Oh, no. Uh, oh, God. Nothing I like better on a Sunday afternoon, a bit of swan on the oh, bar. But... You know you can't do that. You know they're back home. The, 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 they're absolutely protected. The, the, and you know the person who owns all the swans in the, England? The Queen. Is the Queen. Yeah, the yeah. Queen. She owns you, all the swans. You can't go in like, I swan own all the swans. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you belong to me. So, <laughs> they are like my army of beautiful birds. <laughs> That's right. And they she all will wear use them. They wear all the uniforms and everything. Yeah, she's they, got and the... she uses them to oppress the peasants. That's right, yeah. <laughs> That's, it's, it's a huge problem a in big our country. Problem over swan, there. swan oppression. Swan oppression. Oh, the times I've been the taking... swans march into the town. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Late, late at night, you're coming out of the pub and it's like oh, yeah, that, yeah. you know. Hey, come you know. on, man, come on, don't oppress me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, and now but, in Sweden, uh, <laughs> they, uh, no, I, they have herring, not herring. They have herring, and they, they, there are two versions of herring. Uh, they're both pickled. It depends. They're distinguished by the length of time. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing that, by the way. Uh, uh, I think, let me I get a bit closer. This, right is, this, is, this, is, this is... Oh, they're lovely, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. They're lovely. And that... That's <laughs> literally... <laughs> literally, Take that, Shakespeare. Literally uh, like, like <laughs> stainless steel. It was like oh, touching yeah, yeah. iron or plutonium. Yeah, it is. Um, it's uranium-236. I tell you, it, and it worked for me. I Thank feel, you. I feel charged. Hello. Um, <laughs> Uh, the herring, the herring is, uh, you know, depending on how long you 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 marinate it for. Right, you've yeah. done it uh, many times. I've I'm never sure. marinated the herring. Have you not? Um, well, obviously. and by that I mean had sex with a man. Obviously, no. I, I've never. Oh, you know all that code, don't you? Um, uh, that's really all. All that Swedish nightclub yeah, talk, it hasn't escaped yeah, you. No, I remember um, it all now. Would but, you like to marinate a herring? <laughs> yes. Perhaps you would like to be pickled for a long time or a short a time. time. Yes. Um, do do you have a favourite time of herring pickle that you like? I like, I like a short time but with a lot of vinegar. Ah. Um, uh, the, the herring is so difficult to eat, I think. It's yeah, my no, friend, it's... my Swedish friends uh, encourage me uh, all the way through the show, and we're going back to make some more walladers back in Sweden this summer. Uh, encourage me to eat herring. It's not going to happen. It's, like, it's, it's either leathery or it's rubbery, in my view. Right. No, but like you... seal blubber. Have you ever eaten seal blubber? <laughs> is is that, that code? That is code oh, also, yeah. actually. But... Uh, <laughs> But, but that's in Icelandic clubs, yeah, actually. Yes, no. I've I, eaten seal blubber in Iceland. You ha <laughs> no, I haven't eaten seal but blubber. But I have but... eaten Icelandic seal blubber. Well, aren't you the big well, old Mr. Yeah. Swanky Pants? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, my, my experience... My... <laughs> <laughs> My experience of pickles across the clubs of Northern Europe. Uh, it's not what I expected tonight. <laughs> Isn't this, a, this is the way this conversation went the last time. Craig. You're a bad, you're a bad, bad influence all on right, me. Right, I'm well, trying get... to talk about a distinguished detective procedural right, crime right. drama on PBS on May 10th. Right, right. Um, right. And, here... and, and I tell you what, it looks sensational as well. Now, do you do you eat a lot of uh, pickled fish or prepared vegetables in there? I, I eschewed the world of pickled herring in the show. Right. But we have many other things that are Swedish. See, now that's how you know that you're a very, very experienced actor, because you don't want to eat something in a scene, because then you have to do all different shots, oh, and you have to eat it again and again and clever. again. My uh, second job on film was, uh, I, I was part of a, a, a dinner party scene in a TV film, and on the first day, uh, and it was four or five pages of dialogue, about five minutes of um, uh, the film, and they were serving an English Sunday roast, and they said, we'll do a master, the entire scene, all five minutes, off you go. Uh, they serve it, and I, so I ate, I completed my plate full of roast beef, Yorkshire pudding, all of these vegetables, yeah, and all yeah. the rest. They said, right, now we're going to do it again, uh, and we'll, we'll do the whole five minutes again. Right. I started that three days later. <laughs> um, I was still, by, by that, I mean, I couldn't look at another roast potato. No, no, at no. this stage, if the camera was doing that, I'd go like that, and then I'd spit it out. Yeah, and yeah. Just, and so that's what you see. Most actors, they do a food scene now. They do, do that, and there's hardly anything taken. Most actors don't eat, actually, anymore. No, and it's a, <laughs> exactly. No, they can't, you know, because, you know, you get more than... 
20 pounds, you can't work, apparently. Exactly, exactly, I, exactly. So I, I learned my lesson Are you hungry, early on. by the way? Are you hungry right now? Because we, we've done nothing but talk about food since you come out. You realise this? I'm not hungry. No, the whole herring thing's put me off it now. I feel oh, as really? I want to... I want oh, to we were talking some... about food? When uh, we were talking about... Well, well uh, yeah, we were talking about food. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> Um, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, I I am a, I like the Wallander uh, show. I think that it's very very interesting character. I do like the complicated detectives. Are you a fan of because uh, I like them in literature as well. I like. Yes. Uh, do you ever read uh, Larry Block or uh, Michael Connelly Michael or Connelly, uh, Dennis yeah. Lehane? Yes, right? He's I, yes, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, they're excellent. And I love I love when uh, a complicated plot will really make sure to turn the pages. You really want to know what happens next. But it's in the middle of it is a complicated character. Uh, in the case of Wallander, he's an ordinary man he's doing this extraordinary job he encounters violence and death all the time and the crucial thing he wants to know inside uh, a world where he has his own troubled life he has difficulties with his daughter difficulties with his with his wife who's, who's, who's left him is why that's quite difficult uh, when your wife leaves that's that's known as difficult uh, yes uh. it is tricky I think he finds it tricky it is, it and is. I think he's a bit cross um, uh, to say I, the I, least. I, it's all the... Because maybe he sometimes gets served herring that's been pickled for a long he's, time. I mean, he's got, of a short time. Uh, he's got a fridge full of herring, Craig, and yeah. he does not want it. He doesn't want it. <laughs> what are we not, saying here, not, the fridge full of herring? Yeah, well, you see, and that's where you see Swedish unafraid of metaphor, you see. <laughs> so he's got a fridge full of metaphor. Right, right. Um, and he's not afraid to use it. Yeah, he's not afraid to spread it on a piece of toast every now and again. Right. But... Um, <laughs> And I think I'm talking about either the herring or the metaphor. Fair enough. Um, and if you don't understand <laughs> subtext, you won't enjoy the show anyway. Guys, Brown, hi, everybody. <laughs>is a soulful singer-songwriter. He's here performing Another World from his album The Crying Light, which, to be honest, this is quite scary looking. Uh, I'm quite scared by this. I hope, I hope she's not coming out. Because if she's coming out, I'm out of here. I'm gone. Please welcome Anthony and the Johnsons, everybody. Anthony and the Johnsons.
You know, that Kenneth Branagh's kind of dreamy, isn't it? <laughs> kind of, you know, kind of dreamy. I mean, you know, he's straight, I'm straight, we're both married to women, but come on. <laughs> when he pretended to feel my man boobs, <laughs> I suddenly felt like someone else. I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> what did we learn on the show? Well, I'll tell you what we did learn on the show. We learned this. Philbin, knock it off. <laughs> knock it off. One more. Greg Verdison. Uh, you and it'll be... Uh, uh, is that your final answer? <laughs> Uh, we also learned tonight, oh, right at the beginning of the show, we learned that women automatically, instinctively, when a man walks into the room, check out his field of operation. <laughs> Which I, you know, in a funny way, is kind of great news. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm going to think about this now when I, <coughs> excuse me. Ah, 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 the pig's got you. Uh, <laughs> Here, do you think this is it? Do you think this is it? That I think I've got the swine flu. I don't know. Are you a doctor? I don't know. Maybe I... Because you know, like, when a movie starts, somebody in a movie, and they go... <coughs> at the start of the movie, you go, Oh, dead by inter... Yeah. That's it. They're going to be dead by halfway through the movie. <coughs> no, I'll be fine, Inspector. <coughs> That's all we learned. Good night, everybody. Good night.